All right, what is going on guys? Welcome back to Too Much Tech. My name is Kyle. Today, I wanna to let you guys know about the best controller for Xbox, at least. Yes, yeah. Don't worry, don't worry. There's one for PS4. There's actually a new, new one for PS4 coming out that we're gonna talk about later. Right now, we're gonna talk about the Razer Wolverine Tournament Edition for Xbox One. What makes this controller, I guess, so good for Xbox One? By now, we should all know that controllers with paddles on the back are at least twice as good as controllers without them. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of refuse to play any first or third person competitive shooter or whatever without the paddles on the back because it is so very crucial to be able to jump and move around and aim and whatever at the same time. Jumping is number one and then there's always like a secondary action that's like almost equally as important depending on like what game you're playing. Like if you're playing Destiny 2, it might be dodging or meleeing or something. If you're playing Fortnite, it's probably jumping and building. If you're playing Call of Duty, it's probably jumping and meleeing. So it's always really, really important to make sure that you have those pedals on the back because they're going to give you a competitive edge. And being able to jump and aim and do all those things at the same time without taking your fingers off the thumbsticks is really going to improve your game quite a bit. So with that being said, how many paddles does the Razer Wolverine have? So the Razer Wolverine Ultimate Edition is a, it's not it's not an entirely different controller. It's a little bit different and there are some reasons why I didn't buy the controller. I'll get to that in a second, but there's actually two paddles on the back of this one. So the term edition has two paddles on the back. Ultimate edition has four. I'll leave it at that. I'll put a picture on the screen so you guys can see how different it is, but I didn't get the ultimate edition for durability reasons. I don't plug my headset into my controller. So the little controls at the bottom, I wasn't really worried about. More so from a durability standpoint, uh, these flatter paddles, I'm hoping that they're gonna be a lot more durable over time uh, because other controllers that I've used have only lasted maybe like a year, year and a half with some heavy use and I really hope that this is gonna last a lot longer. I've had this for a few months now. It's worked really good. I've had no issues, so hopefully it stays that way. Now, as far as the controller, um, it looks really, really good. It's got the RGB lighting from Razer that you can control with Razer Synapse on the Xbox One app. Um, that's basically the only way to control the lighting and uh, modify like the buttons and stuff. So if you're buying this for PC gaming, I really hope you have an Xbox because without it, you will not be able to change the two paddles on the back and the two buttons next to the bumpers and the triggers. It also has trigger stops, which can really, really help when you're playing like, I don't know, Call of Duty or Destiny or whatever, you have a semi-automatic weapon and you wanna shoot it faster, or if you just want your trigger pull to happen sooner, then you turn on the trigger stops and basically it just happens a lot sooner. The travel distance isn't really there. It travels about half as much compared to a full travel. So I'm glad that it's really, really easy to make it work. There's just a little switch you hit the little switch on off on off done just like that the trigger stop is on trigger stop is off so if you're playing a driving game and you need the trigger to go all the way down you just turn it off if you're playing a first person shooter turn it back on just like that super easy the buttons on the face are super duper clicky um it's kind of like a mechanical mouse that's like the closest thing that i can relate it to it feels like my death adder um like mouse actuation that's pretty much how it feels it's cool i like the sound i can hardly ever hear it anyways because i'm wearing a headset or you know listening to the game so i'm not really listening to the controller but it's cool it's there whatever <laughs> now as far as the feel of the controller um on the sides it has like these little rubberized grips um that are very similar to the xbox one elite controller it's cool i like it adds a little bit of grip so we don't really have to worry about that um dropping your controller or anything like that but the front is still like the regular xbox finish it's kind of slippery the d-pad is just like the four individual directional buttons so i wouldn't recommend this for fighting games um maybe like everything else but fighting games is if you use that d-pad during fighting games you're not going to want this controller you're probably going to want to go for the tournament edition because you can change out the d-pad as well as the thumbsticks now the only thing that i don't really um i guess love about the controller is that the controller is wired basically on xbox the only way to get a wireless controller is to buy the official microsoft one that's the only way so either that or you can buy one of uh, uh scuff or battle beavers or whoever's modified original xbox controllers that's the only way to get a basically a, a paddle controller that's also going to be wireless because everything else that's third party like 100 made by a third party company is going to be wired and that's the only thing that i don't love 
The thing that I like about having a wire controller is that the wire is really, really long. So if you, you know, play in a really big room or really far away from wherever your Xbox is, um, you're not going to have to worry about, you know, not having a long enough cord because I believe it's like six or nine feet or something like that. And then you also don't have to worry about charging it or having the controller die on you in the middle of a game. So that's really, really annoying. And I think that kind of outweighs the controller being wireless because I play really close to my setup anyways and I want as least amount of input lag as possible. So having a wired controller really is not that big of a deal to me. Other than that, I like the controller a lot. It's very comfortable to use. It might be really weird at first to get used to the pedals, but give it like 48 hours and you'll be good to go. It'll be muscle memory, even like the little, uh, the little buttons next to the bumpers and triggers, those will be really easy too. So just make sure that you give it a fair shot, give it longer than like a day or two, and uh, you know, it'll become part of your game and it'll feel natural. And then regular controllers are gonna feel weird. Trust me, they will. You won't wanna use a regular controller again after using this or any of his PlayStation counterparts. But anyways, that's gonna be it for the video today, guys. Thank you so much for coming through to the channel. If you guys are new, be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, help your boy out. We're trying to grow out here, okay? Drop a like if you enjoy. Turn that bell on for notifications so you know when I upload a new video. And uh, yeah, that's all I got for you guys. The everything I just said, and uh, yeah, have a good day. <laughs>